subscribe my channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. In space propulsion systems and orbital space vehicles. Sounds strange? Now let me make it a little more stranger. Space taxis. Thankfully, I'm not the one who's going to be explaining any of these. We have Bellatrix Aerospace with us today and we have its founders, Rohan Ganpati and Yashas Karanam. Welcome to Daydreamers with Himika and you guys represent the new age Indian space tech brands which are doing phenomenally well and leading possibly the run. So, hello and thank you so much for making time for the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us on the show and congratulations on all your work which you've been doing so far. Thank really you. So thank you so much. <laughs> so, but tell me something, this space taxis, I read about it in economic times and to a person like me and many of us who are very who are illiterate possibly in your domain for us this sounds more like star wars or something that hollywood is talking about or can you please tell me about what space tax, uh, taxis technology is how is it going to change the world and what is coming out with a technology and a revolution like this specifically from india uh, yes, uh, uh, basically, uh, let's just keep, uh, when I'm talking, I'll make it as simple as possible, but just let us have hold on for a pack of contents, okay? Uh, it's similar to that. Uh, let us imagine uh, the job of a rocket. A job of a rocket is to put a satellite in a predestined orbit around the Earth, okay? So, to orbit around the Earth, you need a specific velocity, which we call it as orbital velocity. So that comes to around uh, 28,000 kilometers per hour. So if you revolve around that velocity, or, uh, uh, you would set to be in orbit around the Earth. So the purpose of a rocket is to just do that. The purpose of a rocket is not to put a satellite at its house. At its house, what I mean is, it's preferred orbital slot. So satellites normally have propulsion systems of their own, engines of their own. Once it is ejected out of the satellite, these engines fire up and they go to their destined space. What we intend to do is to make it more efficient in one single launch. If we have 10 customers who need to go to 10 different altitudes, say if a rocket leaves us at 500 kilometers, we need to drop one customer at 400, one at 800, something like this. The, it is not possible in a single launch. So, what we do is the space stack, we e carry the customers. And we hire only one rocket. So we go to uh, the rocket will leave at us in parking orbit, from which we take these customers and leave them, uh, you know, where their destination is. So it's called last mile delivery. For example, rocket does the job of uh, taking you from, uh, say, Bangalore railway station to Hyderabad railway station. We pick you up in a taxi there and drop you at your house. So uh, that's how space taxis work. But similarly, like we have heard of over cooling, like car, car cooling. So one car, two to three people can do. Concept is similar. So that's what space taxis do. And with our electric propulsion, which we develop, it's making it more efficient. Just to add to that, right? Uh, probably uh, talking from a business sense of things, if you look at uh, probably launching your satellite on a very big rocket. Uh, the cost of launching uh, things to space is uh, traditionally on uh, big rocket and the price is already started. One of the new market that came in is the small satellite launch market. And uh, one of the, uh, if you look at the pricing of it, it is actually higher than what you pay for a bigger rocket because you will have to ride share and you can't go to your custom destination. To big rocket. So here it is some acting in between where you can go on a big rocket and uh, post multiple payloads and take them to their respective. So it is uh, bridging that gap between a big rocket and a small Interesting, interesting. Um, explaining it with Uber sounds very, uh, uh, I'm not going to say easy, but it's a, easy, uh, it's a good a similarity that you gave, but I'm sure this is far more complicated than Uber or any okay. of our taxis would do. But um, going by, um, see, I recently spoke to Satshore. And uh, I've been speaking to other space tech companies that are based out of Bangalore. What I find very interesting with these stories is that a lot of space tech companies like yours or like Satshore, there is a lot of empowerment, tie-ups, collaborations going on among them. 
So how has this been building up and how is it add, adding to the India space tech story? Can you please explain that to us? It's a very good question. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, space is like a very uh, big and challenging domain. It's always uh, done better with collaboration. I am good at probably one part of the supply chain and probably I am good at certain service. I would rather partner with somebody else and offer it as a much bigger package. So that's just something we did uh, very recently with uh, three Indian space startups. One was uh, Zatshur that we mentioned. Second with uh, Dhruva Space and thirdly with Skyroot Aerospace. And uh, going forward also, we are open and we are exploring possibilities where there are synergies. Actually, uh, uh, we have to look at where uh, both of us can work together and meet something bigger. And uh, that way, I feel uh, now that the space policy has opened up and India has a very big opportunity to serve the global market. Uh, combining together and serving solutions for the global market is something that we strongly believe in and we will be uh, growing much higher. We will see more of such collaboration. This also sets precedence in the global arena, in the global platform, that uh, companies from India are actually capable. See, uh, because uh, when people think products from India, they should think it, uh, think it as very high, which ISRO has demonstrated. So when you go world over, you know, the respect which ISRO gets is immense. So same thing we can actually do. So such synergies can be partnered with homegrown companies uh, and send an example to the world that we can do it much more efficiently. Nice. Um, also, I would like to know a little bit about your own personal journeys. Uh, what When I was uh, researching about Bellatrix Aerospace, something that uh, stood very significantly is your tagline, propelling dreams. So from a dream to a company, can you please tell me a little about that journey? Because startups are a lot of money a lot of funding, a lot of investment, and you are in a space that requires primarily a lot of money. It's a very good question, and uh, it's very difficult to keep it very short, but I'll try my best. So both of us come from very different backgrounds. Um, both of us happen to be family friends. I was born and brought up in UT. Uh, Hill Station, Yashas is from Mysore. Uh, I consider myself much more closer to the stars as in you know you are up in the hill and uh, stars are more visible so always fascinated by space as such space travel and science fiction and uh, space if you can see science fiction is actually becoming reality a hundred years back we never thought uh, we would actually fly but then Wright brothers came and disproved it and just 40 years after Wright brothers 40 50 years after Wright brothers flew their airplane men landed on the moon Right? So these were inspiration and being an amateur astronomer myself, uh, we thought space is the next big thing for mankind. We were all adventurers, our ancestors, so we moved from places to places. So now space is so vast and humanity should actually step up. But what is holding us back is the cost, the enormous cost and the technology which is associated with it. So in college, uh, we thought about that and then we decided to put a platform for ourselves and do uh, research in a field uh, which is which I studied something like propulsion. So two of my juniors and myself came together and started developing uh, one of a kind engine which runs on water as propellant. And then uh, Yashas uh, uh, joined the team. Uh, Yashas's interest was primarily in uh, business and uh, strategy and uh, you know law also. So it was a good uh, amalgamation of a sort. So we came together 2015. That's when we also got the first order. So we are the first startup to get the order from ISPO for uh, developing and delivering the uh, propulsion systems for this athlete. So it started out in 2011 as students. 2015, Bellatrix was registered as a company and uh, with four people. And uh, 2016, we came to IISC. Now, 2021, we have four uh, different clusters of products and we are looking to build the OTV as of now with a strong team of around 35, 40. So you have really grown from uh, zero to 100. It's been a very difficult journey so far because investment in space, that to investors to make them understand uh, the business potential, how it lies. Because if you want to do R&D, you need revenue. So how big, it's a very big market worldwide. It's a $400 billion market in India. Uh, it was not, it's not easily understandable. 
So it was it took a lot of time for us to convince and find the right investors who will support us in our journey. So that was the big learning curve. It took us almost three years to find the investment. So because investment acts as catalyst, and in space the gestation period is higher. So you, you have to uh, a return on investment takes time. Also, I read a story about you some time back where they said that Bellatrix is one of the companies. What is India's role in the global space tech scenario? If you could explain that to me, because I believe in the recent times, a lot of speed has, um, you know, encountered the, uh, the, the journey. So what is it like today versus what it was maybe 10 years back? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, probably 10 years back, we were uh, just starting out. Like 2011 is when we started out as a student project, uh, through a student project. And we had started with the idea of building this space company back then. If you look at it, that time, probably there was no private space company. Right? All these uh, players who were in the uh, space industry were all mostly suppliers to ISRO and DI. They were all much bigger groups. Where ISRO did most of the design. And uh, all the manufacturing was supported by the industry. Uh, for the industry to come up with its own lineup of products and independently start and get into a market, sell it to international players, right? That was nowhere in even the idea idea there in the Indian market. Worldwide, that had already picked up probably by 27, uh, 2007, 2008, that had picked up and probably Elon Musk, SpaceX gave a big catalyst and confidence that people are able to build such companies. And after that, worldwide, it started out. And uh, we started in 2015 formally. And by that point of time, uh, we had already realized that there is a lot of potential that India has. Because our initial team itself, we could see that uh, provided we make that kind of effort, we'll be able to disrupt and believe that technology. The next step was in building the business, which uh, we together decided and decided to take it on. But today, if you look at it, uh, Fast forward like 10 years now, a lot has changed and a lot of uh, new startups have come up. Probably last uh, three, four years, uh, 15 to 20 new space tech uh, startups have come up. And recognizing this. There are startups in India in working in space. And uh, realizing this now, the government has also uh, decided to support space tech companies. You might have seen this in the article. The, uh, last year's COVID relief package also had a small portion called uh, opening up space, space re reforms. Now the government itself is pushing and promoting uh, laws that are going to help space companies like us build businesses in India. We can get access to ISRO's facility. And the uh, new arm in ISRO or the government department of space has been set up called in space, which like regulates and gives us permission to carry out this. This was not there earlier. Earlier, you didn't know if you would be able to allow uh, or if you would be allowed to uh, launch a rocket, launch a satellite. Now, all those are getting eased up, and this is also like uh, opening up the doors. And you see a lot of changes. Basically. Hopefully. Also, so we can see Space Tech taking an important uh, position in the whole Atma Nirbhar Bharat Making India initiative scenario, I, I'm assuming, with this. Uh, that is correct. Now, I think uh, last uh, one year or so, I think the government has put up space in a lot of places. And uh, I think the government has realized that India has potential in space and ISRO has already got its credentials right. So, worldwide, ISRO has a very strong image now. And, uh, India definitely on a private side should uh, like, uh, use this opportunity and allow its private side. That is what even bigger countries are doing. Just to add to what uh, Himika, you asked us, India uh, realized the importance of space, uh, which the impact it can have on common citizens through the legendary Vikram Sarabhai in the early 50s itself. We are connected today. The world, uh, I'm talking to you uh, through teleconference. The world has become a much small space, uh, a very small space. It's only because of advances in space technology. The government has realized it because the term software itself was coined for Apollo's moon landings. So uh, the return on investment in space is hundredfold. So if you invent a technology, it has dual purpose, multiple purposes. You can use it in your, if not necessarily space. So which other countries have recognized, uh, India, now the government is opening up, up this doors to private. 
to reap the benefits. So in 2019, I believe you received a, a very good round of funding. Um, what is the future looking like with the money in the kitty now? What new projects and what new plans can we look to hear it from Bellatrix Aerospace? Uh, I think with that funding, we were able to uh, like firstly work on the products and take them to space qualification stage, right? Uh, there are a lot of cycles in building a product. Probably once you have your lab product, you cannot directly send it to space because it definitely has to work. There's a lot of stake involved and uh, your systems have to be very thoroughly qualified uh, to match the half space environment. I think Rohan can probably further elaborate. But uh, normally, uh, your hardware needs to be subject to a lot of testing. So we are uh, spending that on doing that, setting up our own infrastructure, uh, we have uh, building the we have built the team to uh, much uh, capable and uh, very uh, strong like a ninja team we have. Right? And uh, with all that, now we are ready for space qualification. And probably end of this year, we are uh, having a first set of clusters flying in space on actual satellites. So that's where we are heading towards. And uh, other uh, line of products have also started well. We have collaborated with these companies and now we are also uh, building the space taxis as we called it. Right? Uh, this is where we are heading to this. So this investment definitely acted as a catalyst. Because see, space is very hard. You can't send a service person there to repair something if something goes wrong. So if you send something to space, it has to work. So there's not even a chance of failure. So that's why. Uh, uh, doing all the research on ground is important and that's where the funding which we received in 2019 ha helped us. So the next level we are also raising the funds now, that is to accelerate in the business trajectory. Okay, now I want to ask you a very offbeat question, but um, so there is so much of work that we see in Hollywood which focuses on space technology, space travel, etc, etc. Okay, how true to the science is it really? I is Hollywood really doing justice to the science or is it just a lot of entertainment but very little science? There's uh, two things to it. If you look at uh, movies like Interstellar, which had a um, lot of science backing to the story. And also there are other movies like Avatar, which had a lot of CGI. Uh, it's more of, more of entertainment. But uh, if you see uh, such movies from Hollywood, which was made in space, had inspired millions of people to look career in space, take up careers, uh, look at career aspects in space. Uh, but as far as uh, you know, uh, science fiction itself is concerned, as portrayed in Hollywood movies, we are actually on the path, and I think science fiction is becoming a reality. So, uh, what is being shown, certain ideas like what is shown in movies, actually is being incorporated, like space elevators or you know mining on the moon, setting up bases on the moon, permanent settlement on Mars, as shown on those movies, are actually uh, serious projects which are uh, which big agencies are undertaking right now. So two aspects, as I said, one, of course, they've inspired millions of younger generations. Two, uh, you have to divide it. Few movies are very scientifically accurate. The other part is just for entertainment. Uh, what really builds investor confidence? How did you manage to do the funding rounds in your favor? Because this is a question that a lot of startups, space tech or otherwise, will also uh, you know, look for answers to. So any advice to the upcoming startups about that? Uh, I think uh, probably two, three things. Yeah. One is, uh, I mean, how strong is the technology you are building and where you can. And by the time we raised investment, we were already in a good advanced stage where we had our products ready, and uh, we were only asking money for qualifying them. And we had that uh, confidence. I mean, we could give that confidence that the product is ready and working. That is one. And we also had contracts with uh, a reputed agency like so, which really helped us. Second is probably how strong is your business case and how differentiated you are compared to your competitors. Probably, uh, if you're in an auto automobile industry, for example, if you are just building a bike, there are already 20 companies out there in the market which are building bikes. Right? How do you differentiate yourself from the company? It is something very uh, similar here also. So how different are you doing stuff compared to your competition? Uh, how certainly do you have a roadmap and an action plan 
to say that you are going to get into the market and disrupt the industry and take a competi uh, competition out and get that customer from us. That is the second thing. And third one is probably uh, we feel that uh, technology is something that needs to be very strong with the core team. Uh, probably here at Bellatrix, I think Rohan is uh, pretty strong technically and also the core team involved there. Uh, everybody is pretty strong. That is very important for a space tech company. You can't have uh, probably just the management team running the space tech team. Just to add to what Asher says, that the most important point, what is a technology, um, team, business plan, everything uh, is just 50% of what investors see. The rest 50% is the trust in the founders, the confidence level which the founders have. This is the advice I want to give. Uh, so they actually, because they're betting on you, they're putting their hard earned money on you, on your ideas. So uh, you have to give back that confidence in them. So that is that is the major chunk. So I give fifty percent of that to uh, you know founders basically. How strong and uh, competitive you, competing you are. I would also like to tell the audience that um, Deepika Padukone has invested in your company. That is true. I think it's it's very. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How does that happen for a person who's not a? I mean. She's not really a space technology person. How did you get her interest in Bellatrix Aerospace? In fact, through one of our investors, Connex, only we got introduced to Deepika. Uh, but when we also had this question, like, um, uh, how will she actually invest in tech? Uh, will she say no? But when we met her, uh, she was a very humble, down to earth person. But when we explained our business plan, she was very excited. So what you need in investors is the excitement that this is going to lead from you or from this point to that point. That I'm not seeing many people who are so excited uh, uh, such as Deepika. So uh, we are very thankful to have us on our table. And her excitement also gives us uh, more energy, you know, uh, to prove what we are set up. Certainly, certainly. If I could ask you to name two startup, uh, two space tech startups in the world whose work you really admire at this point, then could you name some of them? Um, uh, or to be very honest, when we started Bellatrix, I really didn't know even SpaceX or Elon Musk exist. Right? We were so cut off from the world. Uh, 2011 might sound uh, so. I mean, it's not too too old, right? It's just um, nine years back. But honestly, we were not uh, aware of what was there. But through our journey, uh, two startups, since you have asked, homegrown, I would say, um, Stature, which you have interviewed, because uh, the founders had the courage to leave a well settled job like ISRO, if they were ISRO scientists, come and actually do something different for the company. Another one is, of course, Elon Musk. Uh, from SpaceX, of course, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk together, Amazon, and because they had the courage to look at the impossible and prove to the world that private people can also do. They actually proved this. So uh, three people, as I like say, uh, Blue Origin, SpaceX, and uh, Pure Research. And um, the final question now would be from me today. Um, if I have to ask you for three startups, uh, startup entrepreneurs, three founders, three from India and possibly three from the world uh, globally, who you think have done phenomenally well, they don't have to be space tech companies only, but uh, from a greater sense, then who would you name? Each of you. No, I'll take this opportunity. Yeah. Um, I drive an Aether 450X, okay. So the electric uh, scooter, which you are aware of. It's a beautiful example of how uh, uh, Indian made products can be world class. So Tarun Mehta, uh, if I'm right, uh, the founders team had this vision uh, to uh, do something with electric mobility and, um, uh, and also successfully coming out and delivering a world class product. So I would name Tarun Mehta from uh, uh, India. And uh, of course, um, since you've asked uh, from the startup ecosystem, uh, uh, founder of Paytm, 
Uh, and um, uh, uh, one more, if you would ask me, uh, you would like to answer that. Anyone comes to your mind? Not really. You I've been thinking about so it. I, I, mean, I mean, I need to think uh, these two. Of course, there are other successful people out there. But uh, uh, founder of Ather and founder of Paytm happens to be uh, the favorite. Worldwide, of course, SpaceX, Mr. Musk himself started it out as a startup. He and Amazon, uh, Bill, I mean, uh, Jeff Bezos together, they, they, um, they both are always uh, heroes in that way. And next, um, founders of Airbnb, you know, uh, who opened up uh, uh, travel for common people alike. Somehow, um, whichever uh, founder of startups I have asked this question, Elon Musk is always in the list. Elon Musk is the one person who never quite leaves the list. <laughs> so I think uh, that's one now. Uh, Permanent with everybody. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, he dreamt and proved what see, we all get see India, we are, everybody dreams. India has talent. But you know, we have a problem here that many hope shy yeah, if, if it fails what? So that we lack that courage. So in him we could see that courage. So that's why I think he's the common for everyone. Sounds interesting. Dare to dream, Abdul Kalam used to say you have to dream, dare to dream. So there was, there's this Elon Musk who actually did it. Absolutely, absolutely. So Rohan and Yashas, thank you so much for taking time for this interview. I know from the days, uh, from the time that we have been talking, it's a very packed schedule for you, time to time. So thank you very, very much. I can understand how precious your time is and all the best with Bellatrix Aerospace. I'll tell you a little thing, but uh, when I heard the name Bellatrix, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. So there was a character in uh, the show called, you know, the story called Bellatrix. Uh, what's yeah. Uh, Bellatrix. Yeah, yeah. So I was just yeah. thinking that is this Bellatrix from there? Or By the way, where did this name come from? We never asked you. Yeah, it's a good question. In fact, everybody asks us this, so uh, I would be happy to tell you. So it is not named after the Harry Potter character, even though I am a Harry Potter fan, yes, it's not. Uh, uh, Bellatrix is a star in the constellation Orion, and uh, uh, I said I am from UT, right? So the skies are much darker there, and when you see, look at the night sky, it's the most beautiful constellation. So in Hindi, we call it the Danush. Okay, so the, the partic there's a particular star there, uh, one of the stars in the Orion belt called as Bellatrix. And we, as a propulsion systems company, uh, say 100 or 500 years down the line, if you ask us where would you go voyage into deep space, we actually want to go near to that star because there are a lot of Earth like planets uh, uh, in that uh, uh, region alone. So we have you need the propulsion capability. So that's why we named the company after that star and not the Harry Potter. Interesting, interesting. In fact, so so this whole Ma the Mars mission that we speak so much about, which is already you just said there are a lot like Earth-like planets. So possibility of life on those planets? Ah, uh, if you go with Drake's equation, there's a lot of uh, probability that there is life out there, and hope is what we have and if you ask me i have the hope that there is a lot of intelligent civilization space wow. is vast that is a very interesting thought hope propelling dreams and possibly intellectual life in another part of the in other parts of the universe thank you so much rohan thank you so much yashas it was amazing speaking to you thanks a lot thanks thank you so much. you're doing a wonderful job keep inspiring young indians because, uh, uh, I mean, uh, initiatives like what you have taken on me actually you know, tells the story out. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, have a good day.